Okay, we good to okay, go. Okay, I was going to say, I know she's on. I know yeah, she's yeah, on. Yeah, you got her. She on. What's up? Chanel, the actress. Yeah, yeah that's better. The actress. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Superstar, superstar. I in know. The building, superstar. How are you? I was so, I was so um, blown away. I really was. I was like, yes. is this Chanel? Well, to God be the glory. I know. Yes. She, yes. Chanel, you're really you good. You always see it just in time. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, was, I was really, I was impressed. Just like me. Just like yeah. me. I'm always last minute with everything. I know. We didn't even know you was, we was working on a project like that. That was, that was huge. That was huge. Yes. You Absolutely. did a really good job. Yeah. Thank congratulations. You so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You did a really, really good job. It. I really appreciate I'm gonna it. I want to have oh, you talk you. a little bit about- I want to have you talk a little bit about it, but we do have a special guest on the line, Miss T. I was actually talking to her the last um, on the late on the late night portion of the Positive Power uh, Triple Threat Friday Night Radio Show, and um, we, you know, I, and this is why I kind of abruptly stopped you, Miss T, because um, the song tied into what you were saying, and you got it. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what? I, I, I'm a DJ, so, I, you know, I always hone into music because music is a measure in which I use all the time to soothe the soul. And when she started singing, I was like, uh, okay, go with it. I can do this. <laughs> so, so, you know, so you know that she is me, right? Oh, okay. No! No, you, you for real, you. <laughs> all right. Okay, okay, so y'all they got me. Uh, that's a girl. Okay, all right, then. <laughs> that's me, yes. I'm that's my new single, I Need You, and it and it released last week. It's doing a really, it's doing really good. It released last week, and um, it was funny because Jerry was like, Shay, you gave me old music, and I'm like, no, Jerry, it was just released, but we did that Blackout Live last year, right around this time last year, so yes, Ma'am, that that was me singing, and that song is actually about me. Um, so, praise uh, God! Thank you for, praise God! Yes, thank you so much for enjoying it. So, we are going to keep going. If you are just tuning in, this is the Christian Party Line. We did have late night with Jerry Royce, and I filled in for my girl Paula G. Voice late, and now Lady Wisdom after midnight who is going to be out. She's at the homecoming in in North Carolina, I think it is, celebrating with her. Um, with her mates, her classmates, and Ooh. we don't have Patrice Jackson tonight, but we are going to rock it. We have another powerful panel with Miss C and Chanel Lynn Malloy, and we are going to talk tonight. Oh my God. This Chanel, I was like, when I saw this topic, I thought about everything that we talk about, and it's just, this is the time, you Absolutely. know, this. this this is just the time. And so Miss T was actually telling us about her experience behind the bars. And I want to start there. But right, Miss T, and you're going to go, what? What? Are you serious? Did this just tie in? Yeah, it tied into everything that she was just talking about. So the topic tonight is all about those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. We are talking out of Matthew 5, 6. Those who thirst and hunger after righteousness. And you know what? A lot of our ministries have come out of just thirsting, being, mm. you know, uh, and I always, I always tell people this too. I say, I'm hungry. I'm not thirsty. I said as an artist only because there are a lot of people who will come at you and they want you to, you know, kind of grab hold of what they have to offer. And I'll say something like, I'm hungry, but I'm not thirsty. Because hmm. people who are thirsty want more than what they deserve, I guess I want to say. You know, people sure. how people are like, you thirsty. Boy, you thirsty. Right. <laughs> That's right. the thing that but they say nowadays, yeah. That's the thing that they say. But there is a, there is a such thing as hung, being hungry and thirsty after righteousness. And yes. so um, if I, I would love for you to continue on with the behind your, when you were behind the wall and people didn't really realize that you were, you know, they say you don't look that way. Your novel is why I kept my past a secret. Why I kept my past a secret. And mm. why did you title, why did you title that? And that, that's where mm. I, I wanted to pick up there. Why did you title your novel? Why I kept my past a secret. 
Okay, mm-hmm. just to make a, a a clarification there, why I kept my past a secret was my first novel ever. Wow. And it wasn't wow. in reference to prison. It was in reference to keeping domestic violence and dysfunctional living and living that uh, running, you know, thirsty, thirsty for God, but not knowing who he was, how powerful and how great he was that I, I didn't see it. And, and my grandmother was there sharing all, all the right attributes with me, but I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it at that time. It came later. So why I kept my past a secret evolved around that. But as far as the prison is concerned, it's all that glitter ain't gold and sitting behind the gates of hell. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. The two titles of those books. And the oh, reason wow. I entitled it that was because you're out here and you're thirsty, you're hungry. You know, the devil is manipulating you because you just got this divorce and you think you're on top of the world and you want this money and you're going to do whatever you have to do to make it look like you're perfect or that everything is okay and actually everything was being shattered. I was broken and uh, fell. Fell hard, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. found myself sitting behind a gate for two and a half years. Wow, for two years, two and a half years, almost three two years. and a half. Look, I'm not gonna take that half off. <laughs> no, don't I take the half. Don't take something. Don't I'm take. Like, <laughs> don't even take a minute off because when wow, you're oh sitting God. behind that gate, it's nothing yeah. pretty in. Everything. It's nothing like what people think, you know, because people think mm-hmm. that I'm going to prison, you're going to get three meals, and you ought to be happy. Jeez. It's not that way. It's yeah. not that way. And I want people and to know. And you had children. It's not that way. Yes, I had young children. Oh, wow. Yes, ma'am. You did. Oh, wow. I did. Oh, wow. You had children. You had children. And and so what ke- What would you say kept you um, throughout that time? You know, were you were you saved when you went into prison or is that where you were saved? No, I was I, I was saved. I was saved. And mm-hmm. that's what kept me. My mm-hmm. my personal relationship with God kept me when I couldn't keep myself. Mm-hmm. And so I knew mm-hmm. that if I just kept my hand in his that I would do this time, although it would be difficult and I would go through it. But I knew that I would make it through. Amen. Amen. Wow. And what would you say, just as an encouragement to uh, people out there right now, those who are listening, um, whether it be on Spreaker Radio or the Positive Power 21.org, or for those who are looking on Facebook Live, what words of encouragement would you give them right now, those who are um, just seeking and wanting more? and don't know where to begin? I would say listen to your spirit because your spirit speaks to you. The spirit, you know right from wrong. You know what you're doing. You know what you should do. You know what you shouldn't do. And if your spirit tells you not to do it, don't do it because you're going to pay a price, and the price may be bigger than you anticipated for it to be because I paid a heavy price. I lost a lot. I lost, yeah. I lost my family. I lost my children. I lost a lot yeah. sitting behind that gate. And, and, and I want to tell them, you know what? Find other resources. Find, uh, you know, we have to find positive measures that we can use, you know, that will keep us from going down that dark road. And, uh, I'm just going to be tr- very transparent. Greed. Greed can cause you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And you Amen. think Come you're going to get tell by. Him, Ma'am? I said, tell him, Miss T. I <laughs> mean, and, and I, I just keep it as transparent as I can because I want people to know. I know why I went to prison. I know why. And I don't, I don't want to... See, if I don't have to see another individual go to prison, it ain't all what it cracked up to be. It's nothing pretty. It's nothing nice. It's nothing like what they tell you. What you see on TV ain't what you actually go through when you're sitting behind a prison gate. It's nothing pretty. Nothing pretty at all. 
And I've been home 12 years. And I don't wow. wish that nightmare on nobody. Nobody. Wow. Wow. Mm. You know, um, there, there's, I'm reading your, um, again, just reading your bio and you say, I believe that a trusting attitude and a patient attitude go hand in hand. You see, when you let go and learn to trust God, it releases joy in your life. And when you trust God, you're able to meet, you are able to be more patient. Patience is not just about waiting for something. It's about how you wait or your Mm -hmm. attitude while waiting. Joyce Myers. And I love that because it tied right into what we were talking about, that hunger and that thirst. And Mm -hmm. let me tell you, I actually was taking a different approach. I heard the shout out to the next man up, Dr. Paul Kelly and John E. Ross, um, an awesome, awesome job tonight. Uh, Mr. Miguel, I cannot remember the last name, but you guys were very, you guys were awesome. And we always seem to have, we have the same guideline as far as what the message is, but we always end up taking a different approach. Um, so to God be the glory, because it's the men who have their way of thinking about what's going on. And then here we come right behind them and we kind of put the icing on the cake. And the approach that I wanted to take with this, and I, I, I pray that you both appreciate this, but there are so many people in the body of Christ who are hungry and thirsty in the wrong way in this season. Yes. Would y'all agree? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, there are so many people. And so so Chanel, I said when I said, oh, Chanel and I are going to have fun with this tonight. (laughs) But then we got Miss T and I'm like, okay, we we about to have fun with this tonight. There are so many people who are, um, and I seem to have been talking about this all week. You know, we have so many people in the body of Christ who are thirsting after the wrong thing who are hungry for the wrong thing. And clearly the Bible says in Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And there are so many people who are failing at this quote unquote God thing, thinking that they are blessed or they should be blessed because they feel they are hungry and thirsty after righteousness, but it's the wrong (laughs) righteousness. So we have pastors who are preaching a word, um, to be famous, not for the body of Christ, but to be famous. So we actually have pastors and preachers, teachers and evangelists who are out here getting paid for what they do. Won't even go to a church to bless God's people unless they're getting paid. Mm-hmm. So it goes back to what you were saying, Miss T, greed. So the church has gotten greedy. Chanel, mm-hmm. I really, I, 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 I don't even, I just, want you to elaborate on what this means to you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Absolutely. Um, you know how to, how to ask those um, intriguing questions. <laughs> um, but I absolutely say, I mean, there are so many, so many pastors and preachers and people in leadership who um who are hunger hungry and thirsty for um the wrong the wrong things and the the people of the world tend to notice it <laughs> um you know the scripture in matthew um what we're talking about here you know matthew 5 and 6 blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled well what jesus was talking about basically is this hunger and thirst um, is the exact opposite of what the Pharisees and Sadducees were seeking for. They sought after their own righteousness, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. they were, they too were money hungry and everything, you know, I'm just reminded of, you know, those, I won't, I won't, I won't won't do that tonight. I won't pinpoint certain, (laughs) <laughs> uh, religions, quote unquote religions. I yeah. won't do that, but I will say there are some religions that you know you have to go and talk to Rabbi so and so so and so and pay for your sins. You know you got to come up out mm-hmm. the pocket, depending on mm-hmm. what you did. Depending, you know, was the amount that you had to pay depending depending on what you did. If so, if it was something big, the more money that you had to pay. Wow, right? have mercy, Jesus. Yeah. And so these kinds these kinds of people. You know, 
they go out and just like you said, they want fame and this and that and the other. And Jesus was even talking to his disciples even about, the, you know, about, things. Yeah. you know, they were out on the corners and they were saying long, loud prayers, you know, in front of everybody just so that they could be seen by people. And so he yeah. told his disciples, hey, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, you go to your closet, go to your secret place, and yeah. I'll reward you openly. And yeah. so then I'm also reminded of Matthew 7, um, 7 through 8, where he says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Then Psalm 37 and 4 says, If you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. The thing about it is people got it twisted. You're, seek, you're seeking and searching after the creation rather than yes. the creator. Come on. <laughs> You know, the giver of all good things, you know. Come on. And so yeah. we got this twisted mindset now because now we, you know, as mankind, we, we, we get, you know, seduced into seeking after worldly things, tangible things, things that can pass away, things that can fade away. You know, even even being like bad people, that fades away. So it's yeah. like, you know, where where is your, Why? Where did the trickery yeah. come from? The enemy, of course. You've been you've been deceived. You've been deceived to to think on a limited kind of you're in a I want to say a limited kind of mentality level. You know, because when you're seeking after things that are earthbound, I want to say, your yeah. mindset can only go so far. There's no there's not even even any room for innovative thinking. God can't even give you any kind of ideas that would add to you the prosperity that you really need for your life because your your thoughts and your your everything your devotion everything that you are is after worldly things you're after you're after fame fortune the love of money the, the the lust of the flesh the pride of life you know when god is the one who is life and gave yeah. you life and created yeah. the world the galaxy i mean you know <laughs> yeah and so if you, and you know after uh huh go ahead <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your thought. Finish uh-uh, your thought. Go ahead. Go, uh-uh. I, I didn't forget. <laughs> go ahead. Somebody's going to be mad at me. Go ahead. If you uh-uh, speak after no. me. Uh-uh. <laughs> Look, they probably like, let her finish the thought. But you know, what I was going to say, Chanel, is this. I was going to say that um, and while you, were, while you were talking, 1 John 2, 17 says, and this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what's pleasing to God will live forever. And yeah. the one thing that I want to say is that we give the enemy so much credit. You know, we our alarm don't go off. It's the enemy's fault. We got a cough. It's the enemy's fault. And yeah. a lot of what is happening is our fault because we are seeing and walking after the things that we desire. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, we always, we always say, well, the enemy is attacking us in this area or the enemy. No, that's my weak. The enemy. No, some of this stuff is just basic common sense. I'm going to tell you this. When I was, um, when I was in a church home, there were things mm. that stuck out to me that I knew wasn't right. Right. And mm. I would want to go deeper. I would want to go deeper. And I felt when I was mm. asking questions that could not be answered, I was kind of set down. And uh-huh. I, I knew I knew that there was something else rising up in me. There was that hunger. There was that yeah. thirst. And I didn't know where it was coming from. And nobody mm. could nobody could help quench this. How mm. it quenched how I how I was getting it quenched is by going to the word for myself. Asking, uh, and so um, I'm going to come to you, Miss T, with this because you said this. You were asking God to show you who you were, and you were asking God to reveal to you those things. And there were certain things that man could not give me. And I think it made them frustrated that they couldn't give it to me. So they were just like, we're going to sit her down for a while. I'm going to praise and worship. We're going to have her stoke for a while. And then when I would ask more questions, it seemed like I was rebellious. And then it Mm. seemed like, you know, Mm -hmm. but I thank God for his love because Mm. he never stopped teaching. Mm -hmm. His word never stopped teaching me. And so you know, there are people out there right now who are thirsting and hungry for more of God's righteousness. And before I come to you, um, here's, I wanted to give the definition of righteousness, the quality of being morally right or justifiable. Mm-hmm. 
the quality of being morally right. It can't be morally right for pastors to be saying, okay, now, you know, that it used to be a, it used to be a blessing for pastors to go to covenant churches. Mm. You know, those, we go to church all day, we go to our service and then we're going to go to sister Beth's church and we're going to go over and the praise and worship going to sing over there. This used to be a desire that each person that I knew every Sunday, you knew you weren't coming home until 10 o'clock. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Miss T, you, you still done with us? Lunch and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'll see you here. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get your take on what we're talking about here and how this applied to your life. I mean, what we really want to do is get people to understand that We think that we are living what we call in, quote unquote, the righteousness. We were hungry, we're thirsty. And I think we're in a generation now where we are being bamboozled by the system of what church looks like. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, like you, I mean, each individual is going to come to God in a different way. Some of us, like you, you were thirsty for more knowledge about what God was, what he had to offer, what he was telling us to do and not to do. Like me, I was reared in the church from a a babe in the same church. However, I knew, you know, what the teachings were. And we all have to find God for ourselves. We're not all going to come to God the same way. We're not going to all receive the same information. We're not going to feel him the same way. But like you said, we are thirsty. We're, we're, We're going after it the wrong way. We're thirsty for the wrong things. Because, you know, and and my grandmother preached this for years and years and years. All I want you to do is live right, live Mm -hmm. right, live right Mm -hmm. in the eyesight of God, because you want to be able to see him in that great morning. And I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to live right, I'm going to live right. But, you know, uh, I learned over the years what she meant by living that, yeah. you know, fabulous kind of life. But you have to find it for yourself because, mm-hmm. like you said, the preachers and pastors are preaching it and they're doing it for uh, such and so. But they got to pay that price for that because they mm-hmm. know. Yeah. I believe they're, you're not going to tell me that they don't know that if you're standing here telling somebody that if I don't give you $5 million, I'm going to die tonight. Me, mm-hmm. I would say, well, you're going to mm-hmm. die tonight. <laughs> because, you know, that's, that's just, you're going to die tonight. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Cause then I would that's just that not down, how I say. Yeah, because, I mean, because why would you come to us to say that if you don't get $5 million by 12 o'clock tonight, you're going to die? Well, you're going to die. Because I don't believe that God came to you and told you that. That's not what God right. said. But that's you manipulating the people that are out there that don't know the way, that have not found Christ for themselves, mm-hmm. does not know God, and and they're, they're hoping that you're the answer. And they send you their last $50, and then the next day you run, run around in the Rolls Royce. Who does that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who does I was about to go somewhere else. I, I was about to go somewhere else with that. I'm gonna stay fish, fish line mm-hmm. me in. Mm-hmm. Throw the throw the line out and bring me and will me. In. <laughs> I was about to go somewhere with that. You know, uh, while you were talking, I was just thinking about the Samaritan woman, and mm-hmm. and so I, I put, yeah, I was thinking about the Samaritan woman. We talk about thirsty. She said it said uh, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, "Will you give me a drink?" His disciples had gone into town to buy food, and the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given, the, he would have given you living water. Mm-hmm. There is a difference. You know, let's talk about all these different uh, plastic bottles of water, Aquafina, Nestle, um, what else, Dasani, all these different bottles of water, and I'm picky with my water. I am, when I tell you, I'm not. <laughs> you know I mean? High quality I am, H2O. Right, exactly. I, you know, I am very picky with my water. I like my water warm, and I can only drink, uh, you know, I'm still, well, 
Put it this way. I like Aquafina. Dasani, I really don't like. But there's a, my mom's like, what's the difference? There's a difference in taste. Absolutely. And so you there's can't drink everybody's water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> they're like, they're going deep on the water now. Girl, the hi- hey. <laughs> the hydration is different. Look, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if that's Chanel or Miss P talking. <laughs> that's Chanel. That's Chanel talking. I'm sorry. That's Chanel. I'm being serious. Listen, listen, it said, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked for the drink, you would have asked him and he would have had, he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? As did also his sons and his livestock? Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Mm -hmm. But whoever Mm -hmm. drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them. It will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me the water. Look, she quickly said it, sir. Give me the water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Chanel. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that, you know, it just showed, you know, in that scripture, it just uh, it gave up uh, just full detail of, you know, how her mindset was still earthly, you know, yes. but Jesus was in the process of giving her enlightenment on the true and living water, the everlasting water. Basically, he's like, woman, I'm here to make you whole. Because yeah. he also said in the conversation with her, you know, he said, go get your husband. She said, well, I don't have a husband. He said, you said correctly because you have had five. Come and on. so mm. when he told her that she realized that, okay, this is not a regular man that I'm talking to, you know, um, she yeah. thought that he was a prophet, you know. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm, basically, mm-hmm. he's basically letting her know, baby, you are broken. You're very broken. Yes. But I've come to yes. make you whole. You know, and basically was letting her know that because she was even saying, you know, yeah, you know, on this on this here on Jacob's mountain or whatever, the forefather, you know, mountain, we go up there and worship. Jesus was like basically he was like, No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. <laughs> there will come a time when you will not worship on that mountain or any other mountain. You know, mm-hmm. basically was saying there the, the, this this thing is far greater and f- way beyond what your human, feeble, fickle, fabled mind can wrap your mind around. Jesus was, this is how I'm perceiving this thing, okay? God is basically basically saying, bring, understand that within yourself, Mm -hmm. you are broken, you are needy, you are you are, I mean, just, you're a wretched mess undone, okay? <laughs> yes, but yes, But Jesus was yes. saying, I have come that you, that I will, that, that you may have life. I've come to give you life so that you can not just live, but have abundant living. Oh, my yes. gosh. And, and, and some of us are so stuck in this earthly kind of way of thinking that we can, some of us can't even perceive the, 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 I mean, just, oh gosh, the magnitude of love, grace, and mercy yes. wrapped up in salvation. I mean, God placed us right now, all of us who belong to God through Jesus, through Jesus Christ are seated in heavenly, oh, look here. Ephesians, the first three chapters, tells us who we are, the power that God gave us, and where we are already placed in the spirit realm. Yes. We, oh, my God. We're proceeded next to Christ? What? We don't, we don't get that. 
Oh, no, 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 no. We don't get it. We don't get it. And then we wonder why we're going through and, oh, my God, Satan did this. Oh, Lord, the devil done did that. And, I mean, you know what I'm saying? But that's because that's where your mindset is. Things are yeah. happening because you have no idea the power that you have in you and everything that you're calling out of your mouth is manifesting in your life because you don't even understand the power that God put in you. The Bible talks about how the power, the, talks about the power of the tongue. You have power to speak life and power to speak death. And so Amen. if we learn, go ahead, I because uh-uh, I keep going. Amen. Go ahead, Shay. <laughs> um, you know, no, 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 no. And you're, you're so right because here's, here's where, here's where, um, you know, we are so, hmm, how do I put this? I was doing a study the other day and it was on pride. It was actually a week ago. I was doing a study on pride and God has a way of taking that study and putting it into something else. And so out of that came armor bearer. And so I didn't understand why I was going to armor bearer, but I ended up studying an armor bearer. And this is why this is how I know that the body of believers now are going off of what they see as opposed to as opposed to what we're supposed to be learning, right? And so when you see armor bearer in today's church, you see somebody carrying the pastor's Bible, they are um, you know, they're carrying the, the first lady's purse and you see and they and they say this is our armor this is our armor bearer. Right. Oh, who is that? That's the pastor's armor bear. And so I guess a part of me wanted to know, where does that come from? Right. So I looked up armor bear in the Bible Uh and it actually stopped in the Old Testament. And when I looked it up, it said that armor bearers were the people who killed the wounded that their over their leaders wounded. So if their leader wounded it, the armor bearer was the one that took them out. Mm. And so, and then it said, and the armor bearer was never mentioned in the New Testament, which means that we are right now contradicting what Mm -hmm. the armor bearer is supposed to be doing. So what that means is, again, we are thirsting and we are hungry for things that really don't even exist. We are not thirsting and hungry. Yes. Yes, exactly. John 6, 3, 5 says, and Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Miss T, it took a lot of believing in that two and a half years. Let me ask you, while you were in there, while you were behind the wall, because Chanel made a good point, we are put in situations. Think about Job. We are put in situations. Look, that was a barter. God was up there like, look, my servant Job is up there, down there. He's doing everything. In the, and then Satan says, no, listen here. He's doing it because you're, he's your pet. You treat him like he's your pet. I guarantee you if I took all this away from him, he will turn just as evil as everybody else. God said, try him. Miss mm-hmm. T, can mm-hmm. you... W- <laughs> and his friends, they came and they said, you had to do something wrong because this only happens to the unjust. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just when you were thinking you were thirsting and hungering after God and he was giving you everything, he's taking it away because you are unjust. Mm-hmm. But someone like you, Missy, put behind the bars, you said, I know, I believe that I was there for a reason. And I had to see it as such. For two and a half years, how did you encourage other people behind the bars when you yourself needed to be encouraged? Mm. Well, see, it was, it's, it's funny that you say that because people didn't know me, but they started calling me the praying lady. Mm-hmm. And when somebody would, would get sick or they needed prayer, they would come and ask me to pray for them. And I'm like... Lord, me? Okay. <laughs> but I, I want to tell you, yeah, because it was like, uh, really? <laughs> and I've often been told that, you know, I should be a missionary and do this and do that. But you know what? I, I go by what God gives me, but I want to share this. Um, there was a young lady that was in prison with me. Her first name was Janice. And when I first got there, she said to me, 
you can't stay up on top of this bed forever. You're going to have to get down. And so at that time, I was still scared because I was new, new in the prison, had no idea. But I told the father, if he just allowed me to just get through this, just wow. let me go through it. But I wanted wow. to be at peace because it, I knew it would be a difficult task. And this young lady's bunk was across from mine. I lived in a barrack-like room where there were two people to a room. And this young lady, I'll never forget it because I came in June. She saw her kids in July and uh, Thanksgiving came. And it was kind of sad because, you know, we were in there for Thanksgiving and I'm I'm saying, Lord, I just want to thank you that I'm still here among the living. Even though I'm not home with my family, I want to thank him. But things turned because the lady named Miss Janice was laying on her bed of affliction. And the prison was so bad that this lady was dying and they knew she was dying and they would not let us touch her. So I went in the room and I said, is there anything that I could do for you? She said, sing Amazing Grace. Uh, See, I don't know. Uh-huh. See, you never know why you're put in these situations. So I went yeah. in that room against all I, and I knew I could go to the, uh, they could lock me up, you know, because, you know, if you being defiant, they'll put you in this special room or whatever. But I was willing to take the risk because this lady was dying and we knew she was Jeez. dying. Wow. And all she wanted us to do was to, she said, she said, Bunky, can you sing Amazing Grace for me? And we sang Amazing Grace for her. And then as I sang it, somebody else came in. And the next thing you know, the whole barracks, 200-odd women, were singing Amazing Grace. And out of the shadow came the devil. And he said, get back in your rooms. Get back in your rooms. And he made this young lady. She couldn't walk. She was so weak and feeble. He made her get down off that bed by herself. And they told us, they said, before he made her get down off the bed and people just started helping her. We said we would go to whatever they were going to put us at. But she went through the double doors and they said that she wouldn't make it off the compound. And do you know she passed away that evening? Oh, And I wow. said to myself, I've seen it all sitting behind yeah. that prison gate. And like I said, I know why mm-hmm. I was there. I know exactly yeah. why I was there. It wasn't about the, the crime that I committed. It was about me loving self, me reaching out to others, me empowering others to see the good in them that they couldn't see. They couldn't see it. And it was like prison was a revolving door for some women. They didn't understand that they had families out here and that yeah. To be at home with your families could be everything. All they knew is that this was a revolving door and that they had to get back. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. if you just let me out, Lord, just let me out. And you can best believe I'm not coming back. I'm not coming. When they say, don't ever tell somebody what you're not going to do. Oh, yes, I told the Lord. No, I ain't ain't coming. I'm not coming back. We won't be doing that anymore. But if I do go back, I'll be coming back. As an empowerment um, vessel for God to say that, you know what, rise above your circumstance. Yeah. Dig a hole. See yourself. See. And, and I did. I instructed some women while I was there because I wrote their stories and I told them, you have to see in you. Take time to search out what's going on in you and stop going to the earthly things. Yeah. And, and, and to this day... Uh, I met some women there, and, and a couple of them I'm still friends with, and they know God comes first. I do nothing without yeah. God. God is the center of my being, and I can't do anything without him, and I could care less about what people think about my seven numbers because they don't justify who I am as a woman or who I am as an empowerment vessel. I do it because God said, and it's in me to do, so I empower others to see the good in themselves, to rise above the wow. circumstance. Absolutely. You know, and like you said, thirst after the proper things. Because it's not, yeah. you know, like we, I, I me, mean, I can only talk about me. I, my, ooh, yeah, I had issues <laughs> that I had to go to God for. You know, because you, when your flesh is weak, you do things that you, you know, yeah. I already know that it's not proper to do. 
But you know what? You have to stop. You have to see it. Nobody else can do it for you. And so, like you said, we improperly do things and we thirst after the wrong things. But until we come to Christ, just as we are, and get down on our knees and say, okay, Lord, what would you have me do? Things are not going to change. Right. You know, I just appreciate your testimony because as you're talking, I'm thinking about a lot of the challenges that we go through in life. And, you know, everyone has this like, woe is me. My issues are worse than the next person's issues. And you just never know what someone's going through. Um, I know for a fact I was expecting to really dig into the book and we ended up getting into this testimony. But there's that freedom behind, you know, people are still behind bars, even though they're not within the four walls, um, mentally still uh, in bondage, not understanding yes. what you're saying that press through. And so there are people outside of the four walls who are still in bondage. Um, and we'll talk about that. We're going to take a music break. Um, I met this young lady at the Spin Awards. Shout out to, to our engineer, um, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide, a.k.a. the Batman, who won the award for late night radio um, at the Spin Awards and Mr. Appointed. We had an awesome time. But um, this song is actually by um, by Neva. Um, is it Neva? There's, there's two Nevas. Hold on one second. There's two Nevas. Yeah, she, she's Neva. Right. I met this. Year. Yeah, she's Neva. Neva for Nation. Neva. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She, um, Ford Nation, yes, Neva Ford. Yes, Neva Ford Nation. This is Walk With Me. And I had a chance to meet this awesome young lady. Um, very beautiful, very, very beautiful, briefly while we were at Spin Awards. So this is her song, Walk With Me. And we will be right back after this music break. <laughs> not be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with us in every situation, whatever you may be going through, don't be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with you. Mm-hmm. Walk with me, Lord. Walk Jesus. 
Hey, my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. If you are just joining us tonight, we had an awesome, awesome topic. And um, and this is just an eye-opener for me. Um, if you're just joining us, Facebook Live, we are talking tonight about Matthew 5. I mean, this has just been one of those eye-openers. We have Miss T, phenomenal author, on the line with us. And we have Chanel Lynn Malloy. Uh, my co-host and Patrice Jackson and Paula G are taking the night off and enjoying themselves, and we miss them so much. We ha- we miss them so much. That was never Ford Nations, Neva Ford Nations called "Walk with Me." I I love that song. Again, I had an awesome, I had the uh, awesome opportunity of meeting her and her lovely husband last weekend at the Spin Awards. And I'm just thankful for opportunities to meet people face to face. You know, you meet them. Um, via Facebook, and you get a chance to meet them face to face. I'm going to leave with this, and I want um, with the last couple of minutes that we do have to encourage someone. What we are really talking about tonight is uh, those people who are actually walking. Um, I want to say greed, walking in greed, walking in pride, um, really showing themselves and not the love of Christ, not searching for the type of hunger that. Uh, the Bible talks about that um, that hunger and thirst for righteousness. They're not seeking that. They're seeking their own um, type of water. <laughs> we talked about how many bottles of water there are, and also their own type of food. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out this scripture, um, Psalm 42, two. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When I shall come and appear before God, when when shall I come and who? When shall I come and appear before God? Mm. I'm gonna read that again. Psalm 42, two. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? If we can take these last couple of seconds, um, Chanel, I'm gonna start with you and just encourage someone tonight. Um, when what we're talking about, someone, you know, that person who's, who's possibly thinking they are walking upright, that person who feels like, you know, well, yeah, I, sh- you know, I'm a pastor and I don't want to get paid. I don't want to get, I don't want to talk to your congregation unless I'm being paid, but I'm thirsting after God. How do we encourage that person tonight to kind of come out of that um, and start walking as the Bible, Matthew 5 is saying? Um, I think that the first thing basically that, everybody, um, no matter who you are, no matter what your status quo is, no matter what your um, position is, no matter, you know, your rank, as anybody, you know, people want to call it. Um, the thing that people need to, or pro- I don't want to say need to, well, yeah, need to. <laughs> the thing that people, we as mankind, period, need to understand um, is that in God there is no big eyes and little U's. There are, uh, there's no bond nor free. There's no rich, no poor. There's no, there's no Greek and no, you know, uh, Jew. All are equal um, in the eyes of God. And when you put on humility, um, you know, when you have humility, when you when you are humbled, is when when you realize that that you're not. Um, you're not whole without God, that God is the source of life, that God is, you know, that basically that you're not going to, you're, you're not going to be here in, in this world forever. You're not uh, um, imperishable. <laughs> you are a mortal being and you are a human, you know, who has weaknesses, who has, you know, doesn't have all the knowledge, you know, you do, basically you don't have everything that you need without God. Yeah. And when you good. realize, when you realize that you are no better than anybody else on the face of this earth, no matter, like I said, no matter the status quo, no matter, you know, the position in the world, no matter if you are the president or if you are a bum on the street, all of us are the same. No matter what we have, no matter what we lack, 
that we are all the same, no matter if you are saved or not. We are the same. We're human. And yeah. that's how God looks. That's how God looks at us. And when you, when you're humble enough like that, that's when God can really use you. That's what, you know, you understand that money does not make you okay. Money does not, you know what I'm saying? Money does not make, does not make you uh, glorious. You know, money is a perishable thing. You can die and your money will go to somebody else. Your status quo means absolutely nothing. And, yeah. and, and and so, you know, when, you know, when you realize, when you realize that, then God, that's when God is able um, to bless you, you know, and to lift you up. You know, the Bible says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. God resists the proud, but he gave, he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, um, Miss Teresa, I just wanted to thank you, Missy, for coming on here tonight. I pray that this bless you. Um, and that uh, most people get more than they expected coming in. And so I pray that to you tonight. And we just thank you for your awesome testimony. And I appreciate y'all giving me a platform to stand and be proud of where I've been and where I'm going, because it's not about where I've been. Truly, it's about where God has taken me. And I, I know that if I just stay focused and keep him first in everything that I do, that he will continue to direct my path. Amen. Amen. And I do want to end. We have two minutes and I just want to say thank you both for taking your time out tonight to have this wonderful conversation with us. Um, and for those who are listening, those who are viewing on Facebook live, thank you so much for tuning in to the Christian party line. I just want to leave you with this. We have to get back to the place where we are just arms stretched out wide before God and that we're laying ourselves aside for um, not just for a second, but to look for the type of thirst that the, that God or that, that the Samaritan woman didn't know about that thirst where she said, I don't want to thirst anymore. I don't want to keep running back to the well, stop running to the well as your source and allow God to be the source. And so I want to leave you with that. We have to get back to our arms stretched out wide where we are before God. And we are just saying whatever talents, whatever gifts, Whatever we have, we are only thirsting and hungry for God's righteousness. So this is the Christian Party Line. We love you guys, and we thank you so much again for this time. Ms. T, I know that we'll talk to you again. And um, can you really quickly just tell everyone where to follow you or connect with you? You can connect with me on Facebook, Miss Author T. Twitter is Miss Author T as well. And please go out to my website, www. Teresa Mason Browning dot com. Thank you for all that you do. Truly, I appreciate all of you. All right, and your book name is your book title again. Um, all that glitters ain't gold is sitting behind the gates of hell. But there's seven books out there, awesome books that will draw you in and speaks about what God does. Because all of it, we don't come to God as saints. We come to God as we are, and we're hoping that God can move us to our proper place. Amen. And before we go, our sister, a superstar, y'all, y'all got to catch the sitcom um, with Chanel Lynn Malloy, a.k.a. Oh, Mariah. Modern <laughs> we got a monogamy. superstar in our midst. <laughs> we got a superstar in our midst. Shout out to Quinn Claire. Shout out to Cassandra Wright. Absolutely love them. Listen, you all, keep your eyes out. Keep your ears open to modern monogamy. It is on and popping. <laughs> well, I love what I saw so far. Go ahead and make sure that you go to her page and look at, I think we've all shared it. I just got blocked from sharing. I don't know why, but we all have tried to share. We all have shared it. If not, go to her page at Chanel Limaloy to see the sitcom. It is, uh, it is very funny. Um, we're proud of you. Positive Power Family is proud of you, and we want you to Thank keep you up so the good work. So we love you all. Happy Saturday, and until next Friday Thank night, love, family. we love you. This is the Christian Party Line, and we're out. XO, XO, XO. Terry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double XI. Live 
Podcast. Yes, yeah, Shay forgot to sing the song, but the kids got it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to the Christian Party Line and Next Man Up and Late Night with Jervis Live. Appreciate you guys. Again, we want to thank the Spin Awards, Mr. Pointer and her family, her staff for the hard work and making everybody comfortable. And I love my room. <laughs> awesome. That's right. You got to check out Peach Tree City. That's right in Georgia. That's right. We stayed at a beautiful hotel and it was called, uh, hey, I forgot the name of it that quick. Anyway, <laughs> we had a great time. In Peachtree City. All right, everybody, I'm Jervis Live Worldwide. Don't forget, y'all, join us again Monday at 8 o'clock with Re Pep Talk with Re and that leads right into late night with Jerry was Live. And then we'll be back again on Friday. But we got Bible study on Tuesday with Dr. Paul Kelly, Pastor's Time. So you can go on out to pastorstime.com and check out the school. We're still loading programs and enrollment features. But if you have any questions, you can email Dr. Kelly at Pastor's Time at yahoo.com but go out to the website you get all the information you need about enrolling into our social program our doctoral program master's and bachelor program all right everything's good all right y'all have a good weekend and we see you back next week and don't forget to check out our website at positivepower21.org amen amen hey 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 my name is davis and i'm from haiti but i'm living in dominican Republic. i'm here positive power 21 Jerry was live worldwide.